Come on, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Approach podcast. We're just kind of getting back in the groove, trying to give everybody something to do since everybody's bored out of their mind. Like, there's only so many reruns of something you can watch. You know, my God, it's pretty brutal. So, there's not much going on. So, we figure we Throw a podcast up, get you some tips, get you some info, get you some cool stuff, uh, and get you some free stuff, okay? So, uh, so tonight we're going to talk about scouting. I got my buddy Skipper. I'm going to call him in a second. <clears throat> but one of the things I want to get cracking is I got a giveaway that is pretty pretty freaking awesome I'm gonna get to it here I'm gonna see if I can get this in the comments on the Facebook page so then you can go and sign up to win Shipper, skipper a buzz. I'm going to put Okay. So the link to win the sunglasses which I'll never call them sunglasses again. I got scolded about a hundred times. It is performance eyewear. That's That's legit. When you come like that, like you better have some cool you better have some cool stuff. So, and Loophole o- always does. I mean, they got they got quality stuff. They got killer stuff. Uh, it's hometown for me, so I'm a little biased. I got a lot of a lot of friends that work there. So, uh, here in Oregon, so lots of cool people, and always working hard. And uh, end users, hunters, anglers, serious people, tactical, like everything. You name it. You name it, they got it. And now they just went into the the eyewear uh, and protective and, you know, impressive performance eyewear. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. FA Podcast, you know this thing doesn't run by itself. It's like you got to put some gas in it. So folks that are always putting gas in it uh, are my good friends at Benelli uh, USA, also Federal Ammunition. Um, that's, what, that's what I shoot. So that's who backs us. That's who I'm friends with been shooting it for a long time so that's my people same with the Benelli's um, uh, shout out to my buddy Rob at Ranchland Outfitters uh, we got a little something coming for you there shortly uh, Rob's a big time big time supporter of me uh, and the brands that I work for and, and when I work for him he's always supported me he's just a great dude great friend 
uh, up in Alberta, Canada, uh, and of course Mossy Oak as well. Uh, there's, uh, they're always supporting me and have for a long, long time. And a couple, couple of the other sponsors uh, that always, you know, throw something for us and do something for us. Um, Camp Chef and Pattermaster, and of course Loophole. So we're going to talk to uh, we're going to talk to Skipper uh, in just a couple minutes. I'm going to get some uh, anybody who wants to jump on and have a comment, have a question, like just go for it. Uh, I see a Danny, I see a Corey. So appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, we're going to talk scouting tonight and optics. And if there's anything that you have, listen, it could be it could be for. Um, you know, it could be for, um, could be for predator, could be for big game, uh, could be, you know, anything you're shooting could be long range, could be tactical, anything you want to ask Skipper, we're gonna, we're gonna burn him up here, and um, and if there's anything you need to know about anything we got going on on Final Approach, man, there's a lot coming this year. I can't really go into it just yet. But there's going to be a lot, lot going on. <clears throat> so, what's going on, buddy? Skipper, what up, bro? How are you? Oh, not too much. Not too much. Not not too much. Just uh, hanging out here at home over in Beaverton, cleaning the closets, and you know, going through all your stuff. And what do you think? Yeah, well, you know, when you live <laughs> in an apartment, you kind of get through the uh, the things you've been overlooking. <laughs> In about four hours on the first day of social distancing, and after that, you get a little stir crazy. So you're uh, so you're already done with that now. So you're already you're already all clean and good, right? Yeah, I honestly at this point, I'd give just about anything for a yard to, to have to tend to, or like a deck to have to stain, or anything like that. But I don't have really? any. Really, really, bro, you want you want a little something else to do? Just something else to do, yeah. Bro, oh, I'll find you something to do. I can find you something to do, no doubt. Hey, so we're talking to uh, we're talking to Sean Skipper um, from Blue Pole. Uh Skipper came over actually from uh, NRA. So Skipper's a well-rounded individual. We met. Uh, oh man, it's going way back on a a waterfowl hunt up in Canada, and me and Skipper got thrown in to bunk together, and it was a good match. Skipper doesn't talk much, and I talked for like hours, so it was perfect. Right. Well, you know, I think they were discriminating against against us East Coast <laughs> folks. You know, I'm uh, I'm from the Chesapeake Bay area, and I don't know if you've told your listeners that you're from Pennsylvania. I don't know if you've admitted to that, but yeah, we just we, they they wanted to keep us quarantined together. Well, and rightly so. Listen, you know, it's a totally different deal. East Coast folks are just totally totally different. So if you're if you're not from there, uh, yeah, it's a little different. There's no doubt. There's no. Oh, yeah, I, I, no I get asked every day when I'm at the office uh, to slow down and to stop talking with my hands so much. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a good thing, bro. So don't even sweat that. You know what I mean? That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. So Skipper's been around the block. Uh, you know, listen. the The thing about the thing about me and the FA podcast and everything that goes down with Final Approach. Listen, we're we are as real as we can get. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm an end user. I've been a hunter forever. I've been waterfowl hunting since I could, you know, since I could walk and follow my dad in the woods uh, and, and in the marsh. Uh, I've, I've committed my, my pretty much my life to it. So I, I am in this as buried as I could be. Uh, and, you know, I do some predator hunting. I love long range shooting. Uh, I, I honestly don't care if I ever shoot a deer or an elk. I, I really don't. And it's no slide against anybody who loves to do that. Like, I'm just so ate up with the other stuff. Like, that's what I focus on. So I just, uh, I just, I just go that route. So tonight we're going to talk about scouting. Um, because really in Waterfowl, if, if, if you want to get anything accomplished easy, you got to find where they are. I mean, that's it. I mean, unless you're running traffic and you're in a high traffic area, meaning that birds are moving back and forth, if you don't, if you're not on the X and find them and find what birds are there and what they're doing, I mean, it's pretty much, you're fighting an uphill battle, you know? Oh, absolutely, man. If you, uh, if you're not on the birds, then honestly, you're probably going out there mainly to get away from your spouse, which, <laughs> hey, maybe that's your strategy, but 
if you want to kill anything, you've got to be where they're already at, or at least where they want to be. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, and the, and the thing about it is, um, you know, like the first thing that comes to mind, scouting wise, obviously is. I mean, we could go into the optics, you know, and talk about, you know, I mean, there's a million pairs that you can kind of go through, but you just want some really good glass and and a really good pair. And I, I don't know. I've had the same pair, Skipper, for I don't know how long, and I don't even know which I don't even know which ones these are. I think they're the Acadias or something. They're ten by forty twos. Let me read it here, because I've had them forever, and they I just took them out of the truck today because I never take them out. Yeah, BX two Tiogas. That's what I got. Ten by forty two. I've had okay, those. Yeah, I've had those, bro, forever. So, I mean, I literally just took them out of the truck and brought them up here. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is is having a decent pair of optics in the truck all the time. So, I mean, is there, you know, explain maybe a little bit about optics for folks just in general. Like some guys will be like, well, what's 8x42? What's 10x42? What does that mean? So we'll give them a little crash course on that. You know what I mean? So you, you know you're picking the right tool for the job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you just want to start with the numbers, you know, 8 by 42 what that means is it's an 8 power binocular, so 8 times the power, uh, same as your rifle scope. You know, it's not it's not variable the way a scope would be, like 3 to 9, but right. you're getting 8 power out of your magnification. And the 42 is the size of the objective lens on the, uh, on the binocular, so that would be the ones facing out, you know, the ones out in front that's your objective lens that's that's where you're pulling in the picture right and you know what that's going to control is largely your field of view the you know the, the larger your objective is the more you're going to be able to see once you look through the look through those binoculars in terms of a field right yeah i mean so you know, some guys some guys are like a, you know they like a lot of a big field of view we'll have 52 millimeter objective lenses other guys if they're running and gunning say they're a, an archery elk cutter or a guy who needs something small and compact you know we will get as we'll get much much lower than that something smaller tighter easier to carry around all day right right i mean i've always i've always stuck in the i've always stuck in the 8 by 42 10 by 42 12 by 50 i've always kind of been i've never kind of wandered out of that area that's i guess my you know that's my zone <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know, and that you know, ten power remains the most popular power on the market. But like, there are guys that like the eight, and there are guys that like the twelve. And yeah. honestly, if you're going to be out there, uh, say, glass in a clear cut for big game for hours, we'll go via fifteen powers. Those are available right. and actually very popular as kind of an alternative to a spotting scope. Right, right. Well, and that's and that's the other thing. You know, there there are a lot of guys that are, you know, spotting for waterfowl. Uh, you know, they're taking binoculars, they're going, and uh, they're, they're trying to get, you know, they're trying to find birds going from here to there, from the roost to the field, you know, and just trying to see what the birds are doing and taking a look at them and, and stuff like that. But then there's other guys who take it to a whole other level and, you know, get the spotting scope out and, and mount it on the truck and, mm -hmm. you know, and they're sitting there, you know, counting hairs and bands. So, and, and I get it, you know, that's, I get it. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And that's why, you know, if, if you're looking for a set of, say, truck binos that are going to stay in your ride and they're going to you know just be something you, you pull out to kind of get an idea for what's in that field as you buy by all means go up to 12 power or something like that because the uh, the weight's not going to be bothering you because you're not carrying them around they're presumably right. riding under your seat or riding in the back or right i mean you know uh, you know Corey just jumped on he said we he uses 50s in the field that's what he uses so you know it, it's all a personal preference and and what you you know what you need there's other guys listen <laughs> as you get older and your eyes change you know what i mean some of that is a little bit of a factor as well you know what i mean because mm -hmm. i notice like i'm not gonna wear my glasses when you know i don't need my cheaters when i'm trying to spot stuff so I i'm gonna you know usually when i use the binoculars nobody else can so i just say bring your own because you don't want to mess with mine after i mess with them <laughs> so oh yeah i mean it's, everyone's kind of got their own little setup and what's what's attuned to their eye and by all means I, uh, you know, I would encourage every hunter, whether even if they're just a waterfowl hunter, a diehard waterfowl guy, to have a set of uh, binoculars in their bag because, whether, you know, it might be a scouting thing. You might want to, you might see some birds land what seems like a half mile away. And you want to see what they are. You know, we, there's never a bad time to be able to see a little bit further, and that's right. what they're for. Right. Um, you know, and scouting. You know, listen, we usually talk about these when you know if I'm doing seminars or doing stuff like that. You know, the main thing we always talk about is uh, and, and and Corey's 
you know, everybody's commenting and, and throwing posts up, but Corey said it usually takes him about two days of looking uh, before he finds a decent spot to hunt, and, and there's no doubt. Uh, the more time you put into scouting, you know, the better your hunts are going to be. So if you can, you know, if you can put that time in, you know, you're, you're so much better off. There's no doubt. I mean, that's going to help. Uh, you know, the first thing I think of, I'm like, okay, I know where the roost is. You know, say I go to a, a part of the country I'm not familiar with, and I know we're going to scout here and we can hunt this area. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the roost and where they're coming out of, and then I'm going to try to find a high spot somewhere where I can kind of get ahead of them. Where are they coming out from and which direction they're going? And you might need a little bigger power binocular, you know, when you're up there, and you might not be that close to it. You know what I mean? So you might have to, you know, up your game a little bit for that and then get in the truck and try to chase. So, you know. Oh, for sure. And, you know, if you to, to kind of expand on that a little bit, the, uh, the higher power is going to help you there, too, because as you know, if you get up on a high spot, glass a big field, glass a couple fields, kind of figure out where you want to be, the moment you leave where you're standing and go try to find that after you get permission to hunt that land, I mean, good luck. You've got to, so you've got to go going in. You've got to glass and find identifiers, find landmarks. There's something. No so when you go maybe a mile, you can still say this is where I wanted to be. This is what I was looking at. There's there's no doubt. There is absolutely no doubt. You know, and 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 we can get into more glassing, but but another thing that not a lot of people think of is using a rangefinder waterfowl hunting and guys are like you know because we'll take it on the goose hunts predominantly because the guys are like what are you guys doing and it's like listen sometimes you know certain guys cannot tell how far things are and <laughs> and and waterfowl guys are pretty good at that uh some are not good at that and they shoot a little too far so what I try to do with the rangefinder is, you know, here we are. Here's the layout blinds. This is where we're. This is where we are. The furthest decoy is whatever, 37 yards. So anything inside that outside decoy, you know, say it's a, um, you know, say it's a upright. You know, it's a big upright. You, you know, you mark it if it's geese. If it's a duck. You know, if it's a duck, you say, hey, that pintail, anything inside that pintail, you know, is killable. So so we're using the range finders a bunch on stuff like that. And if you're hunting a place like, say, all of a sudden we pull the boat in and it's an unfamiliar place. And now all of a sudden you're in some slough or you're in a little marsh and you're putting decoys out and you're like, you know, you're in tight and you got to go, okay, uh... Let me range this, you know, bush that's out a little bit or this little stump. Everything in that stump is good to go. You know what I mean? So so guys are definitely, and I just got some posts on the on the thing. Uh, uh, Dave said he uses a rangefinder all the time. That is something that I think is maybe underused on the waterfowl side. Oh, yeah, I'd agree there. And uh, I've been in that same situation where the guys next to me on a layup line are in a in a pit blind, if I'd, say, if I'd say how far away is that decoy, their guesses would usually be pretty far off. You know, from my experience, if you didn't play football, you're trying to gauge how many yards away something is. Right. Can some can be a challenge to some folks. <laughs> well, and listen, and here's the other thing. You know, uh, you know, Rob Rob Reynolds up at uh, a ranch land. I mean, you know, Rob. So he said, when the sun's going down fast, he said, also stop and shut the truck off and listen if you lost some birds. That's a great. That's a great comment. There's nobody. Uh, listen, I've I've been to a lot of camps. I've been to a lot of places. Been to a lot of camps. Hunted a lot of places. And I, I honestly think that nobody has uh, dialed in their scouting than than Rob Reynolds and his camp up in Alberta. I, I, I've seen people go like crazy over certain things. And there is nothing that they go crazy over. Like his gas bill, I, I don't. I don't even. I asked him one time. I don't even want to see the gas bill. I would be afraid to see the gas bill. Those guys are beating the pavement, like all the time. But 
it pays off. There's no doubt. You know what I mean? And those guys are like GPS marking stuff. They are, you know, they're they're dialing stuff in. You know, everybody, you know, now you can use, obviously, the map systems and all that stuff. And you could say, hey, right on this rise right here, you know, that's where they were. You know, a couple hundred yards, and then you can go in in the morning and, and pick a rate off. But, you know, there is so much uh, to do logistically to put you in a better spot. Uh, let's see. We got a couple. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, here we go. So Danny Lavender said, if you can answer later, I could answer now. My sixth grader wants to hunt. What do you recommend for getting kids into it? Never done it, but we'd be fun to do it. Listen, you know, Skipper, you know, you could talk just as a waterfowler. Like, <clears throat> do you remember the first time your dad took you? Oh yeah, it's it's been a long it's been a long while now. <laughs> well, but, sure, uh, well, sure, but but you know, like the only thing that I tell everybody who wants to take kids and get them started, and this could be listen, it could be kids, it could be older people, it could be somebody in their thirties, somebody in their fifties, like it doesn't matter. Like the only thing that I tell them is, listen, go have a good time. Like you don't have to sit quiet the whole time. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you can kind of play grab ass i call it you could you can mess around and joke you know what i mean and eat snacks and you know you don't have to worry about scent control and you know and stuff like that and you can go out for an hour or two you don't like listen i started my son cole doesn't like to get up early and you've seen him skipper he 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 would rather go in the afternoon anytime than get up in the morning so mm -hmm. go in the midday go in an afternoon so they don't have to get up early and take them out and just have a good time. Take some snacks. Take some hot chocolate. Take some things. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, and uh, my, my dad, uh, back on the East Coast, still takes kids hunting every year. New, you know, uh, kids questions like this, like, hey, you know, I'm not really a waterfowl hunter. Could you take me and my kid hunting and kind of right. teach us some stuff? And he's always happy to do it. And one thing he'll do with younger kids especially is pick his, he'll pick his day wisely. Make, you know, he doesn't want it to be pouring down raining, right. even if it's going to be a good bird day. He doesn't want it to be frigid cold, even if it's going to be a good bird day. Because right. he doesn't want the kid to be miserable no matter what happens. Right. Yeah, don't pick your don't pick your 30-mile-an-hour blow, you know, 32-degree to take, uh, <laughs> you know, the new person, whether it's child or not. Don't take them on a day like that. Pick a, pick a sunny day, you know, attack it like that. Like I said, have something for them to do. And to be honest, like, like I won't lie. I remember the first couple times I went, and I wasn't really into it yet. And I'll tell you, there was two things that got me more into this, and this is no BS, and, and, and you could say whatever you want, but I would tell the story whether you were on or I had a relationship with you guys or not. But I was given a pair. Well, I was given a duck call, first of all, which was the wrong thing to do. So, I got a duck call. <laughs> okay for you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my dad gave me a duck call, and then I got a pair of binoculars. Okay. Now this was before I was carrying a gun, right? So I was super young. So I hadn't like I would go and be like, oh my god, I'm, I'm like, okay, this is cool for a little bit, but then I get bored. So now I got the duck call. Now I'm practicing my duck calling, and listen, the binoculars was a huge deal because. All of a sudden, a hawk was in the tree. And I'm like, Dad, look at the hawk. And then it's like a couple birds landed on the water, and they're all the way over there. And it was like, that was like my gig. Like, what are those? Oh, I think they're black ducks. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm now the spotter, right? So <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm IDing them right. You know what I mean? But now all of a sudden, I got a job. You know what I mean? So that gets me involved. So I'm in it. And then all of a sudden, you know, some Tweety Birds come by, and then there's a woodpecker, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, you know, in Pennsylvania, there's eight million deer walking around. All of a sudden, there's a deer, and it's like, oh yeah, Dad, it's a doe. So, you know what I mean? Like the binoculars and the duck call took uh, my involvement to a whole other level, and you get to stomp in the mud and the water and the whole, deal. you know what I mean? But that took took it whole new level for me. Oh, you, you kind of get a job and. You get, to, you get to appreciate nature because, like you said, you, you see a lot of neat stuff. Even if you're not seeing birds, 
you know, they're, you, depending on where you live, you'll get a fox or a coyote maybe working the edge of the field, and you're looking for a mouse or something to, to, to get after. I was not there on that particular day, but when my brother was younger, he was out hunting with my dad once, and they watched a bald eagle try to take a fox, and it was a fight that went on for about 10 minutes. They got to, so they got to sit and watch and experience that. Oh my uh, God. It wound up being a draw. The, fo- the fox got away. <laughs> That was probably pretty cool. I mean, when, you know, here's here's the thing on something like that. You know, now now I carry the binoculars, but I'm more on the camera. So mm-hmm. so so now I got both. But the thing the thing about that is, you know, you never know what you're going to see, and and that's the cool part about it. And that's the cool thing to you know take the kids, give them the binoculars, give them a, a duck call, give them something to do. Uh, because listen, you could constantly, like when nothing's flying or nothing's going on, you could constantly glass and find something, you know what I mean? And, and Mm -hmm. I, and I guarantee it goes the same into, uh, you know, big game or, or deer. And if you're out and you give your son or daughter binoculars and give them something to do, it will liven things up and give them a job. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and you know if you get lucky, and if, if your kid's old enough to to maybe you know take their sh- take a shot and be working a shotgun, then you're you're typically far more likely to get a kid a couple geese or a couple ducks in a season than you are a couple big game animals. Right, right, right. You can you can you can. It's more sociable. There's no doubt about it. You can go in a group. You know the thing that's cool is you can you know you can take your dad your grandfather your son like you can get multiple generations to go because if if you waterfowl hunt and say you have a spot to go and you know you have a decent spot you don't have to walk far i mean you can get everybody involved everybody can hang out together and you know it goes back to that, you know, that that Trace Adkins song, which is like, you know, it's really not about fishing. You know what I mean? Like, it truly isn't about all that. Like, yeah, we're enjoying the outdoors and we're doing all that, but it's just not all about that. So you can get you can get the whole family involved. You know, I, I've taken both my son and daughter multiple times. You know, the things the thing that they get jazzed about now uh, was when we had the dog. You know what I mean? Like, my son loves the binoculars, and he's on those all the time, but my daughter wants to run the dog. You know, she wants to be in charge of the dog, which is another mm-hmm. job, which is another job. You know, and Co- Corey chimed up. He says he took his daughter the first time in the afternoon when it was nice outside, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Perfect. And I guarantee you, Annabelle likes to run the dog, the old meerkat. You know, she <laughs> loves the dog. You should see that yellow. He looks just like a damn meerkat you would you would uh <laughs> you would die if you saw that yellow so, so well, I'd, have to, I'd have to you'd have to invite me hunting again man bro come on come on. well well we tried this was pretty rough this past year yeah it was it was a rough year with with travel and work yeah, it was. tends to get in the way of things like this yeah it was hey so so okay so danny's asking he wants some binoculars best option uh, so, okay, so let's talk options for an all-around bino for the dad, right? Okay. Then, then let's talk about maybe an all-around bino or something for the kids. You know what I mean? Because obviously we got we got smaller hands. You know what I mean? We got, like, smaller eyes. You know what I mean? So so what about... So let's start with dad and and, you know, maybe he deer hunts does a little elk hunting does a little waterfowl you know what i mean an all-around pair that goes i can get that done everything done with a pair okay well we're start, so starting with dad uh the, the best advice i can usually offer when you're you kind of split differing with you know differentiating between different classes of binocular is first id obviously what you want to do so you're saying maybe he's a waterfowl guy that also does some big game right and then you know, buy with buy the best that's within your price range. You know, with with each step up, you are going to get more features. You're going to get you know more perks, a little bit better build. So, kind of think about what you what you think you can budget for a set of binoculars and go there, especially if they're going to be all around. Uh, for right. example, if you're looking to stay between two and three hundred bucks, our BX2 Alpine binoculars are fantastic. 
kind of they live right in that price range. We've got eight powers, ten powers, twelve powers, a couple different objective lens sizes. You've got our Twilight Max light management system, which is going to give you uh, some very good low light performance. So especially for the big game, you're out there first light, last light. Right. You're looking right. for you're looking for an animal. You're looking to pick out horns in the brush. That's right. You're you these are going to kind of help bring that to your eye by showing you the colors you need to see at low light. If you, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something uh, maybe a step up. You can go up to the, our BX4 Pro Guides, which again, 8, 10, 12 power, a couple different objective lens sizes. You got a Twilight Max HD light management, so it's going to be even brighter in that low light, and I've heard low nothing, light scenario. I've heard nothing but good pair, uh, good uh, 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 reviews, and good everything on that pair you're talking about right now. Oh, the Pro Guides are amazing, yes. and, and they're also pretty compact for their size. Even right. the, uh, the 10 by 42 is very common, binocular size, very compact in the Pro Guide line. So you, you don't feel like you're wearing a, a weight around your neck or, or something like you m- would with some of our competitors. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and, and you get into that, like you said, that 10 power is, like you said, the most uh, prominent power, correct? Yeah, 10 is uh, by far the most popular, but 8, 12, very much available. Right, right, right. Now, if, if you wanted an all-around pair, would you say... Would you say something like 10 by 42 or 10 by 50 is probably a pretty good pair to, let's say, a good all-around pair to get started with? Oh, absolutely. The 10 by 42 is is kind of the the old standby release. It's become the the old standby right now in the marketplace. Right. I'd, right. I'd recommend anyone start there, especially if they're looking for an all-around pair that's going to be something you might have sitting in your truck, but also then right. around your neck as you hike out into the field to, right. to hunt big game. You don't, if you start getting too, too big, then you're, you're losing its uh, flexibility a little bit. Right. Okay, so then okay, so then we got some options there, and we got some price options. Like you said, listen, it's like anything else. Get the best whatever, binoculars, decoys, bag, gun, get the best thing that you can afford. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's easy. Yeah, that's the way to approach. And the, uh, the BX2 Alpines, like I said, they'll be between two and three hundred dollars on the shelf based on which model you want. Uh, the BX4 Pro guides are jump up to uh, they'll start about five hundred between five and six. You'll find most right. of those on the shelf in that range. Okay, so so then then we're looking at you know kids. You know, obviously there's not a kids. You know, it doesn't say kids binoculars. So are we looking at like we're just looking at some compacts? Is that what we want to look at? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're going to want something that their hands can handle and that right. they can adjust. That said, fortunately, binoculars uh, not are not particularly hard to to handle and make your adjustments on, especially with just the center focus knob. Sure, sure. Should be pretty good to go there. Um, you could look again. You could look at our Alpines right. because there's something they can also grow into. It's an excellent binocular. It's, it's something that they'll be able to start using as a kid and as they grow up into their teen years and go out and start hunting. It's it's going to be you know to live right with them. All of our binoculars have a full lifetime guarantee. So these these are purchases that can last for life as long as you take care of your products and don't you know get angry and pitch them in the uh, the swamp because you've missed your thirteenth duck in a row. <laughs> God, I'm looking and I I, I man I should have took a picture. Had my dad send me a picture. I I I don't know how far like say the Yosemite pair goes back. Like I don't know how mm-hmm. old that is. I don't know what the oldest pair is, but the the pair that I had look looked like that um so I, I don't know if it was it but that's how i mean we're going way back so uh you know it oh, the, the assembly line yeah it's, yeah it's been around a while and i know it had a couple predecessors as well that were right. built very similar right so it, it 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 might be something like that so i have no idea what that little rogue pair like that's that looks like some little pair that I would have like I would just sneak in my blind bag or have somewhere all the time and that would be something maybe I would get like like my son who you know like when he was like 7 or 8 like I, I get him a pair that's you know sub 150 bucks and he, I don't care what he does with it you know what I mean so I actually bought the uh, I actually bought a rogue pair a couple of years ago for my now 13 year old. There you go, sister. She was she was 11 at the time. Right. So that's a cool that's a cool little pair, and and it looks like it would be maybe a little more compact for their hands and their eyes and stuff like that. So you know what I mean? That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. So uh, of course everybody's excited. Danny said he's excited about the lifetime warranty, and Corey said yeah he's destroyed a few. So yeah, I know he's a destroyed a few. I'm sure he's destroyed a few uh, 
rifle scopes, I bet you, as well. So that I can that I can guarantee for him. So hey, sometimes life does happen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean it uh hey. Things happen. That's what that's what goes down. Hey, so I mean, as, as you as you as you knew that guys know at FA, uh, I'm sure over there somebody shot a decoy 10, 11, 12 times. No, nobody over <laughs> here has ever shot any decoys. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no way. <laughs> it never happens. Never, never. We have. Thank God we don't make them bulletproof, bro. We'd never sell any. So I can guarantee you that there has been there has been decoys shot. Absolutely. When you pick them up at the end of the year or you're all of a sudden picking some up and putting them in the boat and you hear that that rattle, that rattle of number two BBs floating around in your brand new decoys that you put out, then you know somebody's somebody's a ground pounder, there's no doubt. So and then you just and then you know who it is because you just gotta look in the boat or down the line and go, Yep, that's him or her. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You're checking out the FA podcast. Uh, we're talking to Sean Skipper from Loopold. Um, you know, big shout outs to Loopold for coming on tonight. Uh, we have a link in the comments where you can go, and I got a pair of brand new. Are you ready for it, Skipper? Switch, Let's do it. Switchback performance eyewear. I'll even deepen my voice for that. Uh, these are matte black frames lenses are gray and polarized and and these are usa made so yeah that's something we're, uh, we're really proud about uh on top of everything else we can get into that in a second the yeah. performance eyewear line is designed machined and assembled here in the united states so uh if you go in the comments uh all you got to do is find the link click on it sign up to win it's that simple uh see your boss is being, she's being... Whoa, 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 let's not get crazy. She's not my boss now. Oh, okay, good. Well, then she's just <laughs> being needy. She says, show the glasses. Show the glasses. I didn't want to take them out. I didn't want to be like, oh, I touched them. That now I'm going to have to, like, wipe everything down. I don't have a temperature. You know, I don't have anything. Okay, I, I will show everybody, okay? So here is the case that they come in. The case is incredible. And if you're not watching live that's your fault okay you need to be watching because we show stuff here i'll wipe them down i'll wipe them down they come in a little bag which is a cool eyeglass bag uh and yeah they're built they're built really good like when you clap when you clap them open bro i look like the terminator these are pretty good uh when you fold them open like usually you hear like you know you Listen, I'm always good for buying like two dollar glasses because I always break them. I I'm a guaranteed like throw the sunglasses somewhere. They fall, they break, whatever. Like when you open up like terrible sunglasses, they just kind of like clink open. These like seriously open like a like a serious product. Like, you could tell right off the bat these are for real. So big shout outs to Performance Eyewear, okay, from Loophole. These are pretty cool. So. Uh, we'll have to get you a set, and then maybe, maybe we'll get to go hunting with you again next year. Well, bro, you better you better <laughs> tie the you better tie the sunglasses like around my neck because I don't. I guarantee you, I'll do something with them. So, 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 give me some feedback. So, why all of a sudden? So, why all of a sudden we're in like we're in performance eyewear? Um, what? I mean, great, great product to make. I mean, you guys. You guys got great glass and great everything. You know what I mean? So, what was the... Who sparked that? Yeah, you know, we, we've gotten that question a couple times. And yeah. I understand the, the surprise from some folks. But the truth of the matter is, eyewear is optics. There's no doubt. It's a great surprise. I mean, it's it's totally natural. There's no doubt. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in our wheelhouse. And the way we were looking at it is, you know... Loophole consumers, you know, they expect uh, some of the highest quality optics in the world. And yes. we decided to deliver that in a performance eyewear line. That way they can rep us every single day, whether they're, you know, they're out hunting, they're out fishing, or just going about their daily business. They're going to be able to get loophole quality products on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, listen, the only thing that sucks about it is I'll be able to wear them about four months out of the year here. You know what I mean? But, 
when I go somewhere that, else. That joke is has that joke has been told before. Yeah, we don't we don't see a lot of sun here in uh, in Oregon. But guess what? I'll get to wear them everywhere else. Like even listen, Corey's being a smartass right now in Missouri because you know when I go over when I go over and see all the guys at Rogers and go go see Corey and and do the you know the waterfowl weekend and the whole thing over there. You know he's like he's like great. Give Mario a pair because uh, then I'll leave them in my truck. See, it's it's stuff like that. You know, it's friends like that. I. <laughs> Those are the best kinds of friends sometimes. <laughs> um. As far as uh, distribution model, you guys are going to be pretty much, I mean, everywhere that obviously the optics are sold, you know, the eyewear is going in as well, correct? Yeah, I mean, we, we I don't have the list in front of me of which retailers will have them actually in storefronts coming up. And obviously right. with, uh, with what's going on in the country, that well, you correct. might not be able to go to the store as right. it is. However, starting next week, uh, you're going to be able to go to loophole.com slash performance eyewear, and online. it'll have a full list of retailers, including many that are online. So right. you'll be able to go in and just pick them out and purchase online, have them awesome. shipped right to you, not have to worry about breaking quarantine to go on out. Awesome. Okay, that was going to be that was going to be my next question, you know. Will you be able, like, when, when in store and when online? So that's that's perfect. So that's perfect timing. I didn't even, I wasn't even sure about that. You know, I don't, I don't have much of an agenda here other than, you know, like, I'm not trying to jam anything down anybody's throat ever or or push, you know, push a sale or do whatever. I just, I got cool products we get to use. FA's got cool products we get to make and put out and then I got a bunch of other people that I'm friends with and close with and when something new comes out or cool comes out or something that we get to use all the time and it's good stuff you know all I'm doing is is letting everybody know about it you know I've been I mean oh my god I don't I don't know how long I've had like I said that first pair when I was a kid and what I've been going on I'm, I'm I try to be a lo loyal guy and a loyal consumer and you know, having a pair of loopholes back, you know, eight million years ago, and now living here right by the facility, I mean, that's pretty cool. There's no doubt. You know, so that's a that's a good thing, and I like supporting everybody that's hometown. And you know, there's a lot of good people over there. You know, even listen, even Reese's, she's a nice person. There's no doubt. You know, <laughs> right? Well, you could have said that with a tone of, well, if I gotta say something. <laughs> Reese is great. Tim's great. You're great. Everybody, listen. Everybody that's ever worked there that I've ever dealt with, you know, great people. You know, that's that's a cool thing too. Like, you know, there's listen. There's a lot of companies, and it could be anything. It could be you know the gas station you go to or whatever. You know, sometimes there's just people that just aren't nice. Like I've never met anybody over there that wasn't overly nice. That's I mean that that's pretty cool to say. You know what I mean? Because usually, you know, there's somebody a little iffy somewhere. There's a kink in the armor. Bro, nothing. So that's that's pretty good with what HR does, what your company does, and what your company stands for. I mean, that kicks ass. There, You know, you can't say that to a lot of companies, you know? No, no, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love where I work, and I love the more than 650, you know, fellow Pacific Northwesterners who are coming into that factory every single day. It's just, it's just a great family environment. Yeah. So amazing people. So very, very talented people. And that's why we're, we're able to produce the, the optics on the level that we do. You know, listen, it, I, I've been over there. I don't know how many times, you know, I've done my research, uh, you know, just reading, you know, you read a story or when you're over in the office there, you know, things are up on the wall and you read how far back stuff goes and, and, and the history of the company and, and like, like it is so, um, it it's so interesting, and it's such a storied past that you look all the way back from from where it started, where it came from. I mean, it's pretty damn cool. And if you if you don't know the story, like, listen, we have a lot of time on our hands, obviously, right now with what's going on. Go read. If you want, like, to read a really cool story, how it started, what they were into first, and then they, you know, then they, you know, got into the rifle scopes, like, it, 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 it never, like, it never, like, not amazes me when I, when I see those things or read the stories or look at the, you know, the little whiteboards and the, and the, you know, the products 
that you have and the little ad campaigns and and the info it's bananas it is it is probably one of the cooler you know stories in the outdoor business there's no doubt about it you know i could count them on a i could count them on one hand where you could go back and do some reading and it's a pretty damn cool story and and that one's pretty damn cool there's no doubt there's no doubt. Yeah, and uh, you know, folks can uh, find some of our history over on our website at loopbolt.com. We've got a kind of a living history page where they can take a look and see how things have developed. And But I don't think we offered any more. I know out there, if you're looking for a, a little light read, you can probably find it on Amazon. There was a book that was published. I've actually got it on my coffee table here. Yeah. Uh, this was, oh, this was a while back because it, it only covers the first hundred years, 1907 to 2007, but... Luke Holden Stevens, the first century. Uh, so if you're looking for some, some reading, that book does exist. It's out there. Maybe check out Amazon or, or something. I'm sure you could find it. I don't, like I said, I don't believe we, uh, we actually offer it anymore ourselves. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's 100 plus years. You know what I'm saying? That's a hun- I mean, the book that you have, that's 100 years flat right there. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. And to, and to still go and to thrive and, and you know, through everything you know a hundred years you're talking about you know craziness so i mean look i mean look i mean getting through this right now that we're in you know this is going to be incredible that everybody comes out of this and and we are going to come out of it everybody's gonna stay strong and and come out of this but yeah this is another thing that's nobody's ever seen or dealt with so whole new whole new world right now yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a different world out there at the moment, but we will uh, we will all work together and persevere. And on the other side of this, we will uh, we will see what comes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, the whole thing. And listen, we don't want to drag we don't want to drag everybody down. I just was throwing that in there when we we're talking about business and everything else. But but we really wanted to just get on here and talk about you know optics and give somebody give everybody an outlet to talk about you know hunting and and everything uh, that that's out there that that's coming. Uh, that you could look forward to and listen you know uh, somebody was asking me uh, sent me an email which is uh, they were writing a story and they said hey can you give me a couple tips on you know what to do in your spare time like I'm writing an article and you know what am I doing like like you know everybody's got the same comments like you know do some reading watch some shows uh, you know, do some research, do this, clean your guns, clean your garage, you know, clean up the boat and all this other stuff. And I said, I said, call all the guys you hunt with and, and especially if they're older and just check on them, see how they're doing and just BS with them on the phone and trade some stories. And my main thing was, first of all, you'll make them feel good and it'll make both you guys feel good because you're talking hunting and that makes everything go away right that's number one number two like if they're older than you or they're a little more seasoned than you you might learn something i know that's crazy but you might right oh yeah <laughs> it's you, cool. know, you know what we should do mario it's and, been known uh, to I don't happen know if he's listening right now or not we should just start handing out brad fence's cell phone number <laughs> and just let people call him well i had him on i had him on last week and we were going, oh, my God, bro, we were up and down everything. Like, we were talking about empty your freezer, get your recipes out. Like, listen, we ran the gamut last week. So, yeah, Brad, listen, Brad is the absolute prepper. You know what I mean? There's no doubt. He is. Did, did anybody uh, point out to Brad that I don't think, I don't think he, you have to feed half of Alberta to empty his freezer. Yeah, well, freezers, you got to remember. <laughs> He's got like an ice house at this point, I imagine. Yeah. See, uh, so um, he has a whole room now with several freezers and like a whole meat room, like a whole cutting room, and a, like a kitchen. <laughs> so, br- like, listen, if I had if I had enough room for that, and I killed that many animals, I would absolutely, absolutely have something like that. It's it's incredible. And if you go up there this this fall, you'll see it. It's going to blow your mind. It's so cool. <laughs> it is so cool. Um, so here's a random question. So so uh, Danny Lavender said, uh, "What's favorite shotgun?" So what's your favorite, Skipper? You've you've ran through enough. Oh, let me see. You know, 
when I was an outdoor writer, I had to make something up. But now that I, I'm, I'm yeah, away right. from that, I can I can be more honest. Yeah. You know, grow, growing up uh, and still what I shoot today. Granted, I didn't start with this when I was you know younger. Of course, I had to grow into it before Dad gave me one. Is a uh, is a good enough edge. Is, is a I've got a Beretta Extrema Two, which is what Mario has seen when I've when I've come out and hunt with him before, and it's what I all rely on. For ducks and geese, for the most part, until it somehow stops working, which as long as I take care of it, I don't, I don't see happening. And you know, my entire family, we've we've always been Beretta shooters for our waterfowl guns. Part of that probably stems from the fact that at least when my dad was uh, growing up, Beretta was still doing a lot of their operations there in Akakeek, Maryland. Right, right, right there. Where, uh, which was you know right there, not far from where he was living at the time. And you know, politics and things like that have have changed where Beretta is manufacturing some of their stuff, but. There's still a lot of loyalty to them on the eastern shore of Maryland, and right. Maryland in general. So, so he picked it up early and passed that down on to my brother and I. And you know what? They are they are damn fine shotguns, as you know. Well, and that's where Benelli is now, right? They're in that. Are they in that facility, or they're combined, or what is that? Yeah, yeah, they're all they're all part yeah. of that that whole same family. And Benelli, I think Benelli, most of their operations have stayed there because they don't they don't typically make firearms that mess with Maryland's politics. Right. Right. Um, so, um, Skipper is a bigger guy and he has bigger hands. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is like that Beretta doesn't fit me as well because I feel it's got a big forearm to me. You know what I mean? It does. So, so, so that is an absolutely thing. Like you don't just have to pick it up and see, like you either, you either like fit right into it or you don't, you know what I mean? There's no doubt. I have... I have run the gamut on shotguns. Um, I, you know, started on an 870, which most people thought of, uh, or most most people had, because just you know, my God, two hundred dollars, you were in a shotgun, you know, and we were kids. That's what we got. Uh, and then we got a different Remington when we kind of got older. And then, and then like I got my first Browning which was freaking cool, you know what I mean? And then I got another Browning, and then I got into the Benelli's. And and right now I'm in a, a Benelli Super Black Eagle 3, and it is like it, it, I had to get used to it. I mean, listen, you change, you change from, let's say, an American gun into a, an Italian gun. It, it does shoot differently, there's no doubt. You know what I mean? There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. But I am so in sync with that weapon now that, like, I am, I'm good to go. Like, I don't, I don't need to stray. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm dialed yeah, in, and, I mean, and that's 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 a good point. There is, you know, some guys will will ask you, know, what's your favorite gun? What's the best gun to buy? And it's really the gun that fits you best because you right. need that. You know, your shotgun is all instinctive shooting. You need it to be an extension of your arm. Yeah, I mean, you know, here, like here. So, so Dave comments he likes his Vinci, uh, his Benelli. That's his favorite. Daniel Kranz just said he he said I probably and this is so true, bro. Listen, when you are chucking down serious money on a shotgun, on a waterfowl shotgun, he said I probably went in and held the SBE for like two months before I bought it. Listen, that is no BS. I'm telling you, you go in and you like put it to your shoulder and you're like, oh man, that feels good. And then you look at the price and you're like, holy crap, like, like where did, where did the price on the guns go? They just kind of went right through the roof. And then you like, you leave the store and then you go back in and you're like, I gotta, I gotta try that again. Does it still fit as good as I thought it did? And you put it up and you're like, oh man, that's so good. So believe me, you have to go in and you have to shoulder it. You have to feel it. You have to get the forearm. You have to put it up to your shoulder. And and listen, you're gonna know that's for you. You know what I mean? There's no there's no doubt. I mean, you could be back and forth on maybe you know, say you're going from like a Franke to a Benelli, and you're going you know, or or you're going from like a Winchester to a Browning. Like those two guns are sim- similar. Uh, Benelli. Uh, Franke, very similar. So, I mean, you could be going back and forth like that, but it's just about the same. Well, it is the same manufacturers for each of those. You know what I mean? So, you're really comparing apples and apples. They're slightly different, but the feel probably is pretty close to the, the same. So, that at that point, you just need to make a decision. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It, you know, it's 
a big part of his confidence too. It's like shooting a basketball or uh, hitting a baseball. You've got to feel good about whatever what, what you're holding there, what you're bringing to your shoulder. If you don't like the feel of your baseball bat, you're probably going to swing and miss more often than right. more often than not. And if you don't like the feel of your shotgun, you're probably going to miss birds more often than not. I was just going to say this. Daniel said, "Best thing is to get your buddies that let you try their shotguns." I was, I was. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Absolutely, like. You know, if you're if you're not sure, find somebody who who shoots a lot of waterfowl or just has a bunch of shotguns. Because listen, oh man, the days the days of going to and I know you had to remember this, especially from the East Coast skipper. When if and if you weren't old enough to shoot, your dad was like, go to the store and like all of a sudden you went in the back of the store to try a shotgun out and you could shoot some clay targets because the store was like out in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, I I remember going to do that. Not me shooting, but I remember my dad going, oh, well, let's go out back and try it. Like, those days are so far over. Like, that that was such a cool thing to do. Like, you walk in the store. Now, obviously, it wasn't big enough to try a rifle, but shotgun, you'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go out the back and see if it fits. And you throw a couple of clay targets. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that fits pretty cool. I like that. I'll take it. Like, those days are kind of over. So yeah, you got to find somebody that has one of the guns you're interested in and just try it. You know what I mean? I mean that's I mean that's the best thing I can say other than, you know, going to the store and try to fit it to you and and see what feels good in your hand and everything else. So, you know, that's that's Yeah, and then put in the time to be proficient with it and take care of it and I mean, you Mario, you and I have both killed birds with hundred dollar shotguns and two thousand dollar shotguns and i don't think the birds noticed yeah listen it's it's um you know you know the, the old saying is you know the arrow the indian you know what's you know it's not the arrow it's the indian it's the shooter like like i remember my my grandfather like i was a kid and i remember him saying that i mean that was a long time ago and and that sticks with me because it's it, it truly isn't you know what i mean if if you're a good shooter um, and the biggest thing now is like, you know, there's, I know, you know, some guys that shoot, you know, still two and three quarter inch shells and not three or three and a half inch shells, you know, they are dialed in and, and there's some guys that's, that shoot 20 gauges, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For waterfowl and, and kill big geese or do whatever. I mean, it is the shooter. There is no doubt about it. It, if you're dialed in and you've been killing stuff. You know, like, you know, somebody comes out and they're like, oh, I've been shooting this 20 gauge for forever. And listen, they're not carrying that 20 gauge because they don't shoot any birds and kill any birds with it. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know, they're dialed in. Or if somebody comes out and they have, you know, a gun that's older than me and you together, there is a reason they got it. And it's not because they can't afford one. You know what I mean? Because they kill birds with it. That's the thing. So if you're dialed in, I don't think it matters, just like you said. You can kill them with a $200 shotgun or two grand. Like, if you're on, you're on. So Yeah, I mean, I've hunted with guys who, uh, honestly, I, could, I couldn't I could swap out their choke tube if I wanted to because whatever choke they've got in there has been in there for 35 years. <laughs> At this point, it's not coming out. Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we've all hunted with guys like that. So, you know, it's like... Yeah, like let them go. They they got they're dialed in or they're not dialed in. So it's just it's anything else. It's practice. So once again, we're talking to Skipper from Loophold. Uh, Sean Skipper uh, was good enough to join us tonight. Make sure you jump down in the comments of the podcast, and I think I think you can get in and sign up to win until Friday uh, at about four central. So if you want a pair of performance eyewear from Loophold. These are the switchbacks, uh, matte black frame, uh, shadow gray lenses, polarized, and and um, Risa dropped these off, bro. It was hysterical. She said she was going to put it up on on your guys' Instagram, but listen, she pulls up, she gets out of the car, and Tim's running the you know the video. She's wiping it down with. Uh, a disinfectant wipe. She wipes the box down. <laughs> then I got a, I got a loophole hat that's in plastic over here. I she wiped it down and then she gave it to me. So then I come in the house and then I wipe everything down. So listen, everything will be wiped down when it comes to you. Okay, guaranteed. So, but it can live on the box that I send it in, which 
I don't have it. I haven't tested positive, but it can live on the box. So what I've been doing with all my boxes is literally open them up, throw the box in the garage, and wash my hands and take everything out. So just be careful what you're doing out there. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, we're going to give those out. You got till Friday till uh, 4 o'clock, so just jump down in the things. Corey said, thanks, Skipper. Well, it really wasn't Skipper. It was Reza, so you could thank her. <laughs> Nobody ever thanks me. It's hurtful. <laughs> Listen, you guys, you, you, Reza, and Tim, everybody's, uh, everybody's been great help uh, with, with everything here. So big shout outs to all you guys. So I appreciate that. So yeah, if you want, uh, I can, I can tell, tell everybody a little bit more about the, uh, the eyewear while we're talking. Yeah. About it. I mean, let's get a little bit more because, um, you know, listen, I, I jumped in at shot show just to see it. Um, you know, and I, 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 you know, listen, I was busy. You were busy. I wasn't trying to take up any of your time. I figured we'd get back here. No problem. And, and discuss stuff. So yeah, throw, throw some info on it because on the eyewear because uh folks need to know like listen these aren't these aren't sunglasses like these aren't they're not sunglasses so go ahead <laughs> that, that's the best i can say no these, these this is a high quality product uh and they really take full advantage of all 113 years of uh, the optics manufacturing expertise we've got and you've got the switchbacks. There are four other styles, the Katmai, the Becknara, the Packout, and the Tracer. All five uh, are shipped with frames that are made from a lightweight ballistic-rated material, and uh, the, lenses, the lenses are scratch-resistant, they're polarized, rugged, clear, good to go. Uh, three of the styles, including the one you've got, the, the switchbacks, so the Packout, the switchback, and the Tracer, meet or exceed uh, ANSI Z87.1 high-velocity impact standards. So that means they are qualified to be range glasses. You're 100% safe, 100% green, good to go, wearing the packout switchback or tracers at the range uh, while you're out hunting birds. You've kind of got that wraparound protection. The lenses are going to withstand the high-velocity impacts. You're, it's, it's the equivalent of you know, buying a, a set of range eyewear and throwing them on, and you've got these with the very stylish-looking sunglasses or performance eyewear, as you will. Yeah, uh, the the polarization is actually infused, which is something I'm, I'm excited about. What that means is... It's inside the lens. You're not going to scratch it off or going to rub it off after years of cleaning them or anything like that. You're not going to lose your polarization. Yeah, because most most polarized sunglasses, it, it's on the outside, correct? Um, some, especially some of those budget ones that yeah, I'm the, sure you've picked up at the yeah, gas bro, station. The, right, the cheap ones that I have. That's what I'm saying. The polarized ones that I have, like it's on the outside. That's why I scratch them. That's why I lose them. That's why, yeah. There's no doubt, bro. I am the king of probably nine dollar sunglasses because I guarantee you, I know I'm going to smash them, break them, lose them, fall in the river, like whatever. Like, like I don't know. And if and if I if I get a pair of these, I'm just gonna probably have to tie them around my neck so they don't like you know. So if the glasses fall in, I fall in like one of those deals because I know what I'm gonna do to them. So. Um, I'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure you don't lose them while I'm there anyway. Just as we'll, we'll do uh, we'll do eyewear checks. Mario, you're kind of like a hand check. Mario, you have to hold them up in the air for me. <laughs> I got him. I got him. Right. Uh, I just added the link again because somebody asked. They didn't see it, so I just I just threw the uh, I just threw the link up there. So that's up there. So yeah, I mean this is uh, you know listen. The cool thing about it is is they like you said they are certified for the range, which is which is very cool because now it's like you don't have to change when you get to the range you can wear them in the truck get out of the truck go right to the range and shoot which is that's awesome because it's like every time you get there they're like hey you, you know you need your you need your eyewear it's like bro i got mine on like those are sunglasses no they're not and guess what i'm going to tell them they're not sunglasses skipper they're performance <laughs> eyewear you got it yeah, I got it. And uh, you know, if, <laughs> say you're a, a shooter or a hunter that likes to wear, you know, where he likes to wear clear lens, right? When he's at the when you're at the range, or you like yes. to wear an orange lens at the range, or something like that. The tracers, uh, they they ship with either black or kind of a uh, bronze uh, lens out of the box, and they but also include clear lenses and orange lenses that can be swapped in and out, kind of as you will. It, so it gives you a little bit of variety there. Is that the only pair that does that? The tracers. Just the tracers, yes. Awesome. Okay, because that's, you know, because here's, you know, here's the other thing. I mean, the only other time I wear glasses, uh, and and I don't even, I don't even wear glasses. It's almost like freaking goggles. Is running the boat, you know, when it's 
you know, for lack of better terms, it's piss and rain, and you're basically getting just beat to death, you know, from the rain or the wind, and that's the only other time, you know, I would wear something like that, but th that's more of a goggles, but then that's clear, so knowing that the tracers have the clear, that's awesome, because obviously, you know, sometimes we're running in the dark, uh, you know, we're running at, you know, dust coming back, or whatever the case may be, and, uh, having the light the brighter lenses or having the clear uh that's a that's a huge that's a huge deal for me on on that just for me so and i'm not i'm not probably not the only one that does that um you know some of the guys that you know uh when when we first started running the boats we were running those huge face masks you know what i mean that like the the freaking bass fishing guys were running or the the jet boat guys that were running like the skull masks you know what i mean the big face masks so but those <laughs> but those fog up and get all crappy and then you got to take the damn thing off anyway so that so that went to that went to crap really quick <laughs> yeah in in, 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 the, in the uh as we're talking about rain here uh, all the all the eyewear on the line it's treated with our guardian hydrophobic coating which is going to shed dirt water fingerprints that the whole deal give you a real clear crisp image awesome uh and uh, if folks do want to see the other styles like i said hit our website loophole.com uh like i said the, the pack out the switchback the tracer all range rated but we've also got two lifestyle designs i guess you would call them in the becknara and the katmai right uh, they're still made out of very tough uh kind of a, a lightweight ballistically rated frame you know they're not something you might want to go shoot in but if you're just looking for something to wear around day to day uh very nice looking designs Right, right. There is some cool. There is some cool things. Uh, there's different, like you said. There's different, different ones for different. There's just different strokes for different folks. There's no doubt. Of course, everybody's like sending me pictures. Um, everybody's sending me pictures now about. Uh, like Corey just sent me one. Here's my newest loophole scope. I'm like, okay, bro, appreciate it. <laughs> uh, D, who I've hunted with and and is a friend of the family. Uh, D's in Utah. And he said, hey, dude, let me throw my scouting tip. Um, he's saying he's saying uh, hunting feeds here is not an option due to the availability or the permission, which, you know, that's always an issue. So hunting the next stop after feeding is the loaf. And, and D always, that's his favorite thing to hunt is, is after the birds go to feed in the morning, then they head out to like, you know, they head out to a little roost pond. They head out to a little stream. They head out to a little, you know, creek. If you were in Pennsylvania, that's what we'd call that, or Maryland. And <laughs> you know, they're going so on the creek, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're going. <laughs> that's where we'd be shooting them. We'd be shooting them on the <laughs> creek. So, so listen. That's a great. That's a great thing because listen, we were talking about scouting in the morning or scouting at night to you know when they're going in the morning or where they're going to go the next morning. But, but he's talking about you know finding them for midday. And, and seeing what they're doing. Uh, and also, you know, he makes a good point. Like, when you're shooting birds in a low situation, which is, you know, no doubt mid-morning, you know what I mean, that 10 or so to 1 or 2, you know, right in the middle of the day, you know, you're usually not blowing any birds out, and you're usually getting smaller groups to come in. So that's a great, that's a great thing to scout. Like, if you're, if you're hard to find something, you know, go out, later in the morning and find them and do that that's a that's a great that's a great I, I i mean that's a great idea that's a great thing to do in scout there's no doubt about it you know the the other thing you know we're still talking about you know obviously the scouting and the optics and everything uh one of the other things that that i'm doing like okay we got i got my pair of binoculars i'm i'm standing there and i'm 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 looking at the birds that i'm scouting and this is where i'm going to hunt you know take it to the next level then and and what i mean by that is this what are they doing so when i come back tomorrow i make it look like it was the same as today you know what i mean that nothing's really changed okay so if we're looking at ducks on the water we got pintails here in the corner there's some teal over here there's some mallards mixed in with some widgeon you know what I mean? And I don't know. There's four geese there. So I know what to take as far as decoys next next day. So I look like the same. Now, I might put the same out. I might get as close as I can with the decoys I, 
I have to make it, you know what I mean, to make it look realistic. And that's what you're trying to do. So, so it's not only to find the birds, it's also to find them and see what they're doing. You know what I mean? That's, that's a yeah, key thing. Yeah, just, uh, just get into a spot where you know some birds have been and dumping your rig out with no real, uh, with no real strategy, that might get you, you might get lucky and kill some junies, but uh, those, those birds that have had some steel and tungsten thrown at them are going to be like, no, no, no. Right, right. So, so you got you to gotta put every positive you can in your, in your set when you're doing something. And, and when you're scouting, you're just trying to take out all the, you know, all the minuses that can, you know, make it not a good hunt. You know, are the, are the geese or are the ducks being, you know, I always call, are, are they loud? Like, next group comes in, are they loud? Is the group on the ground making a lot of noise? Are they not doing anything? And that goes into the next day on how you should be calling. You know what I mean? I, I, I remember, you know, listen, when everybody started really getting into, uh, like, the cell phone stuff and the cameras started getting better, um, I met a kid who had a great idea and it was at a seminar and I cannot remember where we were but he said when I get to a spot and I'm going to scout I set my phone up through the spotting scope and I record the groups coming in so then I go home and I watch it and I get everything you know what I mean there was 100 birds on the ground in the field to start and then the next group came and the next group came at you know, 810 and then 820 and 830. So he's got everything marked and he really didn't have to think about anything or write anything down. And then he's going back and looking, well, you know, the birds were loud on the ground on every group that came or they weren't talking or whatever. You know what I mean? So he had everything, you know, all his info together. And all he had to do was, you know, listen, he was set up for it. That's what he was doing. He had the he had his phone recording on the on the spotting scope. I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I mean, the more intelligence you can gather, the better you are. I mean, some folks might look at it, look at that, and be like, "Wow, all that to kill some ducks <laughs> or some geese." But the truth is, bro, you're going in to hunt these critters in their natural environment. You know, you're going into their house, and they know what looks wrong, and they they know what feels wrong. And like I said, once they've once they've had steel thrown at them one one or two times, a lot of those birds get smart. You've seen it. Yeah. Listen, it doesn't take it doesn't take long. So, you know, listen, do yourself a favor. If you don't have a good pair of optics, get a good pair. You know, get the best for your money on what you're looking for and what you can afford. Get those, you know, get an all-round pair if you hunt stuff and do whatever. I mean, I always have the binoculars with me. They are always, you know, well, we've had a lot of break-ins, so I did pull them out of the truck. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> kids are they got nothing to do right now so uh i had them in the truck and then i took them out and then i put them back in the other day because i did want to take them because we went fishing so uh but i am going to keep them out but i always have them in the truck throughout the season and where i'm going because you don't know you're like i'm watching stuff we're going fishing we're just going for a drive and all of a sudden you pull and you see something cool and it's just it's just another tool that i always want to have by me so that's definitely something uh, that's a plus. So make sure you got a good pair and then get the kids involved. Give them a job, uh, you know, give them a pair and have them do something. You know, that's why you have kids making, put them to work, right? Skipper. That's what your dad did. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, <laughs> in terms of, in terms of just kind of getting the best you can for your, for your budget, look, we can get you into loophole, uh, observational gear. That's binoculars, spotting scopes, whatever. But on the binocular side, we're looking at, you know, starting between 150 and 200 all the way on up. To, I can get you up to $1,200 binoculars if, if right. that's the level you want to go to. You're getting the loop bolt quality. You're getting our, our full lifetime guarantee on, on all the binos. You're going to be in good shape. They, they should last as long as you do. And trust me, you, you want good binos to scout these birds because look, sometimes you may need to identify species. You, know, you might see a bunch of birds, but it's something mm -hmm. you can't mess with. And if you've got glass that... All right, yeah, I can, I can, that, what I'm seeing is a little bit bigger, but it's not real clear, or the light's really poor, and you can't yeah. tell the difference between like where we're at, Mario, between some lessers and some duskies or something. There's no doubt. You might go, you might go set up, and oh boy, we can't shoot those birds. Yeah, I mean, listen, we we have a subspecies of Canada goose here uh, that we cannot shoot. 
Uh, I think it was like the second. I think it was like the second or third hunt that that you were out with us on that we landed some duskies like right in the hole, like literally twenty yards right in front of us. And I go, well, you wanted to see them, Skipper, so here they are. Here they are. <laughs> so you got a really good look, but just like you're saying, like you know, you're scouting, you know, and say we have a jury day and you need a lot of light. There's no doubt you need good glass because you know you do have to figure out like, is this a bunch of duskies that we can't shoot, and then we're gonna tr- you know trek through the mud and do all the setup and nothing's gonna come but a bunch of birds we can't shoot like i know that's not everywhere but yeah we have that you know what i mean so you know you definitely want to know you know and have the best glass you can so you know and the best yeah, options you every, can for that. every region is different you get out into the middle of the country there are states where say later in the year you can shoot snow geese but you can't shoot speckle bellies and yeah some juvie specs can be confusing uh, you know, the, on both coasts, you're looking at some, in some cases, ducks where certain species go, come and go on the board every year, whether or not you can harvest them. Yep. So yep. You, you don't want to scout the wrong ducks by mistake. Yeah, there's no doubt. And listen, if you're new, if you're new, identifying birds, you know, listen, there's two things that's really tough when you're first starting in waterfowl. And it's, and it has nothing to do with anything else about hunting. It's, it's literally A, telling distance and B, like being able to identify birds. That's two things that are super hard. And do you know why they're, I mean, the reason they're hard is you haven't done it. You know what I mean? Like people say all the time, like, like, you know, I mean, you've got it. Hey, Skipper, how did you know that those were pintails? Well, bro, I've been looking at them for 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, like this, this, this didn't just happen. Like, you know, five times I'm out and all of a sudden I don't even have to look. Oh yeah, those are wood ducks. You know what I mean? Like this has been, this is years of watching birds fly by you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's that's what it takes. It takes just time and being out there and doing it the same way. That's right. You go over to the coast and go fishing, you'll have guys that can pull up a fish and tell you right away without measuring it, yeah, that's a keeper, or no, that's not in the slot, and they right. need to measure it, and they're, they're spot on because they've been doing it for 30 years. That's what I'm saying. So, I'm listen, I'm no good at that. Do you know what I mean? Because I haven't done that that much. So I couldn't tell you that. I couldn't pull a fish in the boat and go, oh, yeah, that's a keeper. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. my, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what th- th- If I go fishing with them, that's an automatic. I just sit there and, you know, I'm the newbie at that point. So guess what I'm doing? I got the binoculars <laughs> when, we, when we're fishing. <laughs> hey, hey, lot, lot of, there's, hey, there's always value for... Uh, Binos on a boat, among other things, you can keep an eye on what everybody else is catching to see if you, that's where you need to be. There's no doubt, bro. They're like, oh, all right, we got to pull, we got to pull anchor and slide down just a little bit. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Listen, that's been done a hundred million times. Like, like what they catch, what they pull in, was that a keeper? What are they doing? Like, okay, now we need to slide back. There's no doubt. <laughs> All right, so make sure you guys listen. Uh, Loophole, great company, great people. There's, there's, there's nothing else to really say about it. They got great products. I mean, all those things are just a positive. You know what I mean? So if you want to do business with, with great people, great products, uh, great guarantees on the products. I mean, you, you can't beat that. So they got everything. They got scopes, range finders thermals uh binoculars spotting scopes mounts like you can go up and down and now the performance eyewear so i mean there's there's so much so much of that company everything's good they're not just making stuff listen and this comes from this comes from me watching the company and the brand and 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 not you know i don't sell it i i don't i don't need to i don't work there i don't sell it i'm just telling you as an end user it's really good stuff that you know, if you wanted to spend your hard-earned money, that's you know that's something to look at. So I think it's I think it's a good deal. So check it out if you need something new. And uh, like I said, great people. Even you, Skipper, you're a good dude. Even me, I don't appreciate uh, your kind words, Mario, and I really appreciate you <laughs> you having me on tonight to chat. And I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty available. So maybe uh, maybe later in the year as we get closer. Oh, no doubt. They come back around. We'll do this again. Maybe we make Reza get on here. No doubt. We'll definitely do that. When Actually, when um, when we could be within six feet of each other, bro, I'll just have <laughs> you come over here and sit behind the desk with me. We'll just we'll just all cozy up. We'll just be radicals at that time. You know what I mean? Then you could be by each other. So, yeah. So, well, good. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, Skipper. Hey, listen. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Loopold.com. If you guys want to check anything out, go do that. Skipper, you and I will chit-chat, I'm sure, uh, as we're bored as hell sitting here in the 
you know, containment area. So <laughs> sounds like a plan, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Yep. Later. Okay. Bye. All right, y'all. That's Sean Skipper, Loophole Optics. You can go on the website and check them out. Great conversation. Great comments. Thanks for everybody jumping in. Uh, make sure you go to the link and click on that to uh, try to win the performance eyewear from Loophole. Man, it's like $200 a pair of eyewear. That's awesome. I mean, that's a great, great thing. So, so you know, show them, show them some support. Next time you're looking at something, give them a shot. Take a look at it. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us on the FA podcast. Uh, we're going to try to bump one of these out every week since everybody's kind of, you know, trapped, let's call it, and bored as hell. <laughs> so uh, make sure you uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, like us on Facebook. You can check out the YouTube channel. We got a bunch of videos up there uh, of a bunch of products and some hunts and some other stuff. So you can go, you can go up there and check that and subscribe. Uh, and like I said, I'm always thanking my people who are, are in this with me and that's Benelli federal ammunition, my people at Mossy Oak, and of course, Rob at Ranchland Outfitters and Camp Chef and Loophole and Pattermaster. Like everybody, everybody's in, I got great people at every one of those places. Uh, they've always treated me great. I know they got great products because I've used them all. Um, and, and listen, it, it, it's just it's just good to be in business with good people and great friends and stuff like that. That's that's the best part about this business. So it's pretty, it's pretty damn school. Uh, it's pretty damn cool. So, uh, Skipper sending me some jokes already. <laughs> All right, listen. Thanks again. Final approach podcast. Uh, if you need anything from us, hit us up fabrand.com. Thanks everybody for the comments and everything and just joining in. And I hope you win the pair of performance eyewear. All right. Be safe out there and wash your damn hands. <laughs>